Okay, uh, hopefully the audio is okay here. Um, it's my little secondhand microphone, so I'll try not to talk directly into it. All right, this is a database we use at work to help us analyze uh, customer database usage. And we have 17 customers. We get their databases back at the middle and end of the month. Uh, you're thinking, why wouldn't we split that up? Why would they have to send databases back to you? I mean, that's that's a lot of work, and it is, but some of these folks don't work off the same server. They work remotely, so to have one back end set up somewhere, they weren't too crazy about the idea. I think we can make it work. Maybe I can sell that part later. I don't know. So we're trying to revamp the database, though. We need to uh, change the whole layout, the presentation layer. And we're breaking it up into three virtual, <coughs> excuse me, three virtual layers. Presentation layer, business layer, data access layer. Um, as well as normalizing the, uh, the tables. and It's a heck of a project. But So our customers are spread out all over the place. We needed a tool to help uh, supplement, you know, the few channels that we have to, to work with our customers, which is basically via email, phone, and uh, we only have maybe one local customer, and they're they're kind of small. They're, they don't use it as much. So I figured, why not, in their database, I programmed a, um, a custom event handler that will map each form's controls as they log as they you know open a new form, stores those in a collection, and um, as they click those controls, I have a a, a logging table or, you know, like, like a log table inside their database, and it collects all that information. It's seamless to the user. It's transparent. Um, and when they send their databases back, we download that data. It, ad it actually sends it down to this database you see on the screen automatically, and we get it into this particular table right here, and we have close to 30,000 records spanning probably the course of two months. But here's what we collect. You know, here it is, the date, time, who logged in, uh, who the customer is, the form they used, controls, you know, what the value was before and after they, they uh, set the control. So that's why this chart looks crazy. I mean, it's showing you everything over the span of two months. It's unreadable. So obviously we need to filter this. So uh, I think between the filter section and this list box to track your filters was probably the hardest part. Extremely fun. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love watching the end product, you know, when it's all finished. Um, so I have four particular filters. Or, you know, if you want to get adventurous and you want to build the SQL yourself, you click this little button here, type in to your heart's content, whatever you want to add to this thing, hit apply changes. Uh, or if you want to stay on the safe side and use the friendly built-in uh, filters over here, just stay over here. And if you build a... Uh, I say you, when, if we build a, a, a chart selection that we like, and oh my gosh, it's the end of the day, we have to go home, we can save it. We can save the query as a text file, it'll read it back in, it'll read all the filters back in, repopulate the box, and set the screen exactly like it was. It's pretty neat. So let's turn on, uh, let's turn on some filters, I'll show you how this works. So you turn on a filter, we're going to add a username, like... Well, we'll go Scott. And I'm not in this database as a user, so that's why the chart's empty right now. It, it couldn't find anything, but that's okay. I, I can at least illustrate this part of it. Uh, username. That's the category we just added a filter, and it sticks on this left-hand column. And the right-hand side shows you exactly what we told it to do. Pick, and it adds it to the SQL clause. Pick everything or every record with a username like Scott, which there are none, but that's okay. Um, we can add numerous filters. Uh, let's add a form category. We'll go like Amex. I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but <coughs> it's an actual category of form. So here, see here, plugged in the category, meaning we, we added a form category filter. Here's the SQL. Now, if you noticed, after we added the first uh, selection, it expanded out a little bit further. I have some hidden combo boxes here, and I have a function that moves these controls over. 
because obviously if we add anything else to these filters, we're building on to the where clause of the SQL statement. So we need to, you know, let's say we wanted to look for forms like Amex or like uh, whatever, you know. Uh, what's it? right? Add that in there. <coughs> and notice, look what it did. It didn't throw the category name back in. It says, oh, I know we already, he's already built a category filter. I'm just going to add this on as a as an or, just like he told me to. So here's the major category of which we have two qualifiers here, filters. Now let's say we want to remove one. Let's say we want to pull off this first one. We obviously want to fix the SQL statement. We don't want to start it off saying where or query form use dot form category blah blah blah. It's just going to crash. So we can pick our selection out of the list box, hit the delete filter. Look at that, cleaned it right up. It pulled up that sub, uh, or the second part of the filter, I'm sorry, that used to say or. It stripped the or off, relisted it as a filter of category type, which is still open, by the way. Now watch this. I'm going to pull off the username. And notice it turned off the username filter because there's nothing there anymore. And we definitely wanted to slide the controls back over and cover up our and or drop down because that wouldn't be that wouldn't be correct. So now the only thing open is form category, which I can also delete, taking us back to our valid SQL. Well let me show you how this chart kind of cleans up a little bit. Let's change form category to like Amex. There, trims it up a little bit. What do all these numbers mean? It's a little more usable. It's <laughs> still not down to where we want it, but we can change the date. Let's go greater than, oh, I believe the 1st of March. A little bit better, right? You can actually read some of this. So the <clears throat> if you're looking at this particular form category, how does, this, how does it help us help the customer? Well, if you look at this tab here, I mean, hundreds of forms that aren't being used. Okay. We have a chart legend because there's way too many forms. The names are too long. They are abbreviated. We did handle the abbreviations so they'd fit in here a little bit better. And that's another section of code that was pretty hard, uh, building the abbreviations and making sure that you had none, none like the other. So we're looking at these forms. We're like, okay, what, what do the users possibly not not need. There's so many forms I may not, may not even know what's in the database. But we can look at this one here. Look at this low one, 80. Form number 80. This is not the number of times that it's been accessed. You're looking at probably, what, 10 times? No, not even. <laughs> Maybe 5. So there, there's a point of discussion right there. We can contact our customers and say, hey, uh, form number 80, going over to our legend. Why don't you guys use this particular form? Uh, what do you use instead? Uh, what, what about it don't you like? Is it necessary? Because a lot of these weren't even built based on requirements. Somebody said, hey, this would be nice. Let's, let's give this to the customer. <coughs> but that's not how it works. <coughs> and we need to fix that. <coughs> and this will help us do that. Um, I think I've shown this. I might be able to just show you a little bit of code before this video gets too long. Um... I mentioned the, uh, oh, oh, this one's pretty small. It doesn't take long to look at. Uh, we have an older version of the database and a newer one, and the form names are different. So we need them to be able to uh, compare correctly. So the old database had a bunch of special characters, no naming convention whatsoever. They just... People just built them with whatever, whatever names they wanted. So I built this function back in March. So it's called temp fix for old database because this is going to go away eventually. But in, in the meantime, I needed to pull all special characters out, <coughs> fix the field names, or I'm sorry, form names, <coughs> prefix the names with the FRM so they were at least the same. And then when we are pulling them in, we at the same time, uh, build abbreviations. And I have a huge write-up here that explains how it's done. Whoops, I just dragged something around. 
which I'm not going to get into. I mean, that's all this code right here. It's huge. And it's a bunch of, you know, string comparisons or, you know, looking at uh, using the mid, left, right statements and uppercase, you name it. Because what we do is, here's two huge form names that we use as, as an example in my write-up. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Completely different names, <coughs> but our abbreviation format is to use the uppercase characters from the camel case names and make that the abbreviation. So both of these would have turned out to be B T B A B N A. We had to fix that. And we had a few forms that wound up being the same. So we figured, okay, I need to build a separate little code module here to handle this. We'll start reading from the right to see what's different. Obviously the A is the same, right? And it's the last letter. <coughs> Uh, not to mention the fact that the letter prior to it is a capital letter. So obviously, they, um, that's not going to work. So we need to back up another step and we say, oh, we have a lowercase letter. That means we're looking at the last letter of a word from the form name that began with the uppercase letter. Are those, are those words different? Yes, they are. We see the word billets here and the word bodies here. So we added those back in, took the abbreviation off that particular uppercase character so that we have two unique semi-abbreviations, I guess you'd call them. So, anyways, there's a lot more to that. If you have any questions or you just want to talk about, you know, some of the other things I showed you on here. <coughs> this is one thing I didn't show you. Notice when you hover over the axis controls, you know, before you change them. It actually highlights a section of the chart that it's going to change. Anyways, uh, it's still a work in progress. We have we have a lot to do on it, but uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching.